Good morning. It is another bright, sunny day, and it's going to be hot again. I am happy to report that I slept much better last night. I did not wake up at all, and I'm always very happy when I wake up in the morning and realize that, that I didn't wake up at all, because it doesn't happen for me very often. And something very unusual is happening right now, which is that I am already up and completely ready and downstairs, and the kids are both still sleeping. That really never happened. Ben is always up before me or at basically the same time as me. So I'm a little bit unsure what to do. This is a <laughs> pleasant surprise because the one thing about since the pandemic started and all of us being home together all the time is I never get to be alone ever. <laughs> so that does get a little bit hard sometimes because I never get any time to myself at all. Even when I'm in bed reading at night before I go to sleep, Megan is still awake and she will often come down the hall and talk to me or ask me a question or tell me something from something she's reading, which is totally fine and I love her, but I literally never get any time alone at all. So this is weird that they're both still sleeping and I'm not quite sure what to do because part of me thinks I should get them up so they can get started on school because they'll be annoyed with me that they didn't get to get started right away. But part of me also thinks I should just let them sleep and that this is so nice and quiet because this is like the only time this has ever happened. If it was the weekend, I wouldn't even hesitate. Of course, I'd just let them sleep. But because it's Wednesday, it's Wednesday, September 23rd today, I'm going to give it like another maybe like 15, 20 minutes. And if they're not up by then, I'll probably go wake them up. Here's today's whiteboard. And we just have two reminders. And these are reminders for me. One is to call the orthodontist. Megan told me yesterday that her retainer on top is hurting her mouth, like the inside of her mouth. So I need to call them about that. And then I need to place a grocery order for pickup. We don't need that much but we're out of like a cup we're gonna run out here a couple basic things like bread and milk <laughs> the reason my face looks so orange is because my theme on my computer on my desktop theme is fall leaves and stuff and it's all orange i'm at my computer now and i am a l little annoyed because i have to hold the phone right now or the camera i have to hold the camera right now because on my little handheld thing because i can't get it to screw onto my big tripod. I don't know what the problem is. I'm gonna to have to figure that out later. Also, I wanted to give you a bit of follow-up on Ben's science lab issue where I emailed his teacher yesterday. I am happy to report that she, I got two emails from her last night. One was a direct email responding to, she and I went back and forth a couple times, and she sent me some screenshots and explained to me exactly some stuff. And I think I figured out what the problem was. And she also admitted that one of the problems we were having is a problem with the ingenuity that it was making it impossible for the kids to submit their lab reports because it wanted it in a format that the kids do not have on their Chromebooks. It wanted them to submit their lab reports as a Microsoft Word document and they don't have Microsoft Office on their computers. The other email I got from her was a email sent out to all of everybody in the whole grade and their parents explaining that and also giving a couple other things about the science lab. So that made me feel much better because that means that obviously we were not the only ones that were having a problem. And I was right to be frustrated because there were issues that were not our fault. So my respect for her is restored because she did follow up on that. I really think that prior to that, she just hadn't taken the time to really investigate what I was saying and what obviously other people had reported too. So good thing there. Okay, I just went and woke the kids up. An update, Megan said, I do not need to do this because she said last night it was fine. So it must've just been something fluky. But I do need to call AT&T because there's 
an issue with my bill. So I'm gonna do that right now. 40 minutes on the phone with AT&T to fix a very small billing error, which was is on their end. They made the mistake. <laughs> it's, it's It wasn't even a mistake. It was just like something they needed to do that they hadn't done yet. And ugh, I hate talking on the phone. I mean, I hate talking on the phone at all in general, ever. I'm an introvert. I absolutely hate talking on the phone. Ask my kids literally every time our home phone rings, I say audibly, I hate the phone. <laughs> I hate the phone. I hate talking on the phone. And talking to AT I've had to talk to AT&T so many times in the past three months. It's a very long story, which I've had to repeat re so many times. I'm not going to repeat it again now. It's a long story. But anyway, I've had to talk to them so many times. And every once in a while, I will get a customer service agent who is awesome. And they're brilliant and know exactly what I'm saying. And they're super smart. And I wish I could just keep that person. Because 90% of the people that you get on the phone when you call AT&T... It's like talking to a brick wall and it's the simplest thing. And I had to explain myself over and explain it over and over and over three times. They transferred me. I repeated the whole thing three times. And every time the person said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. I have to transfer you to this department. And then the next person, oh, I'm sorry, I can't help with that. I have to transfer you to this department three times before I finally got the person who could fix the thing. And then he did, and it was fine. But then at the end, I've already, and I was very frustrated, and he knew I was frustrated, and I'd explained to him that I'd already been on the phone for over half an hour, and that I had been transferred multiple times. And at the end, he says, he starts trying to sell me a new phone. <laughs> and I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm done, goodbye. And I literally just hung up, because I was like, you gotta be kidding me. <sighs> I hate the phone. Who's with me? Give me a thumbs up down below. All right, it is just afternoon and the kids have left to go on their walk. We got a little stuck on Ben's math today. Both Meg and I were looking at it and Meg was getting kind of frustrated. So I said, well, let me look at it while you guys go for your walk and while I'm making lunch. Otherwise, he finished his French this morning and he did his CNN 10 report for me, and he did a nice uh, little report for me on San Francisco was the city he chose to research. I gave him a choice of five US cities that started with S, <laughs> and I told him to pick one and do some research on it. So that was what he chose and why he wanted to visit there. And now I am gonna make lunch. I am making spaghetti for the kids, and I try not, I don't, I'm not a big pasta fan. Sometimes I like pasta, but I try not to eat too much pasta. And so instead I'm gonna make myself some soup. So I'm just gonna have soup and the kids are gonna have spaghetti. And that is what's for lunch today. Megan has actually not started her schoolwork yet today because she's just kind of tired and she wants, she likes to have a nice big chunk of time. And the couple things that she really needs to work on today are longer one's like an hour and then the other one is like one of her papers and she doesn't like to start before lunch if she doesn't have enough time to finish and so she decided to just chill this morning she helped Ben with his math a little bit and then she'll start right after lunch so then she'll have the whole afternoon chunk of time to do her work which is fine I did do the grocery order and I did schedule my next library pickup order because more books have come in so we, we get new library books because I get lots of books that I read with Ben at night too, so I'm getting way too many novels. So basically, Tuesday is library pickup day and Taco Tuesday, which is what I normally do, and Fridays is library return day when I drop off all the books that have to be returned and then I go and pick up Culver's. And it's turning out to be almost every week I also pick up our grocery order. I get our grocery order from curbside pickup at Walmart, which is right across the street from Culver's. So that's very convenient. So I choose those errands in the way that I do because of the proximity of the places to each other. So I really only go anywhere in the car on Tuesdays and Fridays to do those errands and that's it. One other thing I just thought of, 
One of Ben's best friends from school messaged him, like I don't know what they were on, but you know, an instant messenger thing, from school. He's going to school, at the school. And he messaged Ben from school while Ben was working on his schoolwork and they were just chit-chatting and stuff. And we asked him, we're like, what class are you in right now? He was asking Ben questions about virtual school and wanted to know what it was like. And Ben was kind of telling him, and they were chatting a little bit about our trip that we took in August, and his friend was asking about that and stuff. And before I cut him off and I said, Ben, you really need to get to your math and say, you know, say goodbye, and he probably should be in class. His friend was saying that he's really bummed because he really wants to do virtual school but his parents are making him go to school. And he said he hates wearing a mask all day every day at school because they all have to wear masks. And that is one of the big advantages, I think, of virtual school is that my kids do not have to wear masks here at home in the house. They can move around freely. They can get snacks if they want. We can touch and hug and kiss each other and help each other out. They can work at their own pace. I just see so many advantages to virtual school the way that our school district is doing it where it's all self-paced. And I do not see the advantages of virtual school when kids are at home trying to tune into the class and the teacher's teaching or when they have to be logged in at certain times. I don't like that. This is more like when I did online classes in college where it's completely at your own pace. You have deadlines and you have Certain things do on certain dates, but you can completely do it on your own time. That's how I think if they're going to do virtual school and distance learning, I feel is the most effective way to do it. You know, and they could still have like office hours where teachers can come online and talk to the kids and stuff, just like the kids' teachers are doing where they have weekly meetings where they can go on and ask questions and stuff. And the teachers have made themselves totally available. You know, if they have questions, they'll come on and talk to you and help you and stuff. So... I really feel for kids like that, like Ben's friend, because I really wonder how many kids would prefer to be doing virtual school and actually feel scared and unsafe to be at school, but their parents are making them go because, you know, probably because their parents have to work. And that brings me back to, I just don't feel that school should be childcare, especially at the age these kids are. There's no reason that these kids couldn't be home on their own doing this. I mean, yeah, maybe some kids would probably need more supervision than others or they're not really going to do it. But the teachers are going to hold them accountable for that. The school's going to hold them accountable for that. You know, my kids are abundantly blessed that they have me here to help them. And that's great. And they can help each other. But I'm sure that teenagers could be home doing school on their own, even if their parents had to go to work. So... I really do feel for kids in that situation who would prefer to be at home and not be at the school and their parents aren't giving them a choice. It's after lunch. It's almost 1.30 actually. And a certain someone me out. <laughs> still hasn't started I school ben today. With math this morning. You did help Ben with his math. Thank you very much for doing that. She need, she's procrastinating because she has to do her essay for American government, and she doesn't want to. Look at her fast thumb go. <laughs> I'm actually going to go take a nap because Ben is done with school for today, and I got very tired all of a sudden. So you'll have a positive report for me when I get back downstairs, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to shut the door? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna... Hi. There's Ben. He's settling in for creative time slash fun. I'm gonna Chill go... Time. Yep. Oh dear. There are unmade beds. I'm going to have to make those quick before I lay down. The kids can do it themselves, but I prefer to do it. <laughs> Thank you.
I am up from my nap and we already decided that we're not going to take a walk tonight because it's too hot. When the kids went for their walk right before lunch, it was already 81, 82 degrees and they said it was too hot and they got all sweaty. So we're not going to take one tonight, so we'll just stay home. Let's go down and see how the kids are doing. Hey, Mom. What you doing? Mom, just playing the walrus. Have you um, given any thought to Friday's video? Uh, yes. You know what it's going to be? Yes, but it will be a surprise. Oh, okay. So. And you haven't filmed it yet? No, I have not. Okay. I'll go tomorrow. Let's check on Megan. She had to move the fan. See, I said it was hot. It's really hot. It's really hot. It is and hot in here. For me, that's saying something because I'm usually You're, yeah. ice cold. Even my fingers and hands right now are cold, but it's just really hot today. It's really hot today, and it's really hot back here. We used to have an air conditioner in the study over there, and it died and started leaking Freon. And we have searched and searched and searched and cannot find another air conditioner to fit in those windows because they're too narrow and in fact my mom bought one for us earlier in the summer we ended up giving it to my son Andrew and his roommate which is in this video okay how you doing good um I did physics so that I'm ahead in physics okay and then um I decided to go ahead and do my English since I did need to do some of that too okay um so I revised my essay and now I'm taking a quiz. In English? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's starting to get ridiculous. I just got yet another email that there is yet another positive COVID case at the high school. And so that all the people that have come into contact with that person also have to be quarantined. Now, I'm sure one of the possibilities is that when they're doing the contact tracing of the positive cases, then other people are getting tested and then they're finding out they're positive too. But I can't even imagine how many people must be quarantined at this point. I am a little bit surprised that it's, well, I am and I'm not, that it's only been the high school. What do you think about that? I don't know. I mean, Megan said in an earlier video, teenagers aren't gonna wear masks. And I'm sure that, you know, I don't know how strict, we, we're not at the school, so we don't know how strict they're being about it. But I'm surprised that there haven't been any cases at the lower grade levels yet. Although I might only be getting this email. Maybe I wouldn't get emails. Yeah, I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't get emails like from any of the elementary schools or anything because I don't have any kids there. So maybe there have been other cases and I don't know about them. I saw on Facebook today that Marshfield Clinic, which is a huge clinic organization headquartered in Marshfield, Wisconsin, the two big cl clinic and hospital organizations in Wisconsin are Marshfield and Mayo. And we've been patients of both. And Marshfield posted a public plea on Facebook today asking people to please wear masks, please stay home because that hospitals and clinics were getting completely overwhelmed and that schools are starting to have staffing issues because so many people are testing positive in the schools and that they are just very worried about the upcoming flu season on top of it. I mean, a lot of people die of the flu every year too. And I can't even imagine how overwhelmed hospitals and stuff are gonna get if they have to deal with both. You might also notice that Megan has joined me here in the study. She's over at my desk. She actually fell into the red in American government because she's supposed to do that essay and she saved it till last. I actually need to, um, she's caught up in everything else. She's gonna get this done now, she's focused. But uh, it's actually almost time for me to make supper and I'm kind of stalling because I want her to be able to get that done. So good and bad of doing it at home and you know putting things off. She can still work on it. She doesn't have to be at school to work on it, but obviously it'd be nice if she could be done by now like she normally is. Okay, it's almost 5.30. Megan's all caught up. <laughs> she finished her rough draft of her essay and then I edited it for her to help her finish her final draft because I feel like it's always a good idea to have someone with a different set of eyes look at it. 
And so she's all cut up and everything now, and she's feeling much better. That was obviously later than she would normally go and has ever gone, but that's okay. So tomorrow she just has tests and quizzes. And um, I actually find tests and quizzes like that pretty easy. Pretty easy, Especially yeah. Especially with the program we're using. Yeah. And I'm making supper right now. It's almost ready. It has 27 seconds left. My usual Wednesday dinner, Megan doesn't care for, so she's making something for herself that's different. We definitely are not going to go for a walk because it's too hot. <laughs> and we're going to watch Timeless now while we eat. And then we'll probably all just like watch YouTube and stuff for the rest of the evening. I'll show you what we're having for dinner. Okay, so tonight's meal is fish sticks, rice pilaf, and corn. And I like to affectionately joke that this meal is sponsored by the color yellow. <laughs> I know it's not the most colorful thing, but this is actually one of Ben and I's favorite meals. Right, Ben? Yeah. Ben loves this. So this is our typical Wednesday night. Sometimes I change it up. Sometimes I do a different kind of rice or I do a different vegetable or potatoes. 